This is Courage Unlimited, and I'm Chad Ikes. Happy President's Day to everyone, and I hope you guys have the day off. I hope you're doing something fun. I hope you get paid to have the day off. Um, today, I want to talk about some of the... Uh, well, I want to go over the gun control, the new proposed gun control or gun banning bill. Um, I want to talk a little bit about gun control in general. And I want to talk about the uh, briefing the president did the other day about the Parkland shooting. Um, basically, this this briefing... <clears throat> Actually, let me start. I am a gun guy. I like guns. I've shot guns for a long time. I have a few guns. Um, you know, they're kept in my safe. I It's something that's fun to do. It's It gets rid of stress. I like to hunt, um, although I don't get to do it as much as I want to. Um, it's, I see it as my right to own a gun to protect myself and as, um, activity that I like to do. Uh, no one's ever been hurt with any of my guns. You know, I know how to use a gun. I know what a gun is. I know about guns. Um, so I think that that's our constitutional right as citizens. And I, I actually don't like the fact that they're trying to take guns away I think there are ulterior motives to what they're trying to do, um, and I'll go into all that later. But the briefing here basically just goes over what happened and a lot of stuff. But at the end of it, he put he, he writes, or he said, and this is written, This administration will not wait for the next mass shooting to heed that call. We will take action to end our epidemic of gun violence and make our schools and communities safer. Today, I am calling on Congress to enact common sense gun law reforms, including required backgrounds, checks on all gun sales, banned assault weapons, high capacity mags, eliminating immunity for gun manufacturers who knowingly put weapons of war on the streets. We owe it to all of those we've lost and to all those left behind to give grief, to make a change. The time to act is now. Okay, I mean, I, this is more political rhetoric, which I think it's said on both sides. I'm not blaming one side. Um, you know, common sense gun laws. Really, they don't seem very common sense to me because you're, trying to put laws on law-abiding citizens when it's the unlawful people that are doing the wrongdoing. Um, weapons of war. I have, generally speaking, I've ne I did not serve, but I have friends that serve and stuff. And like, I mean, weapons of war. Uh, the M16 was a fully automatic weapon. The AR-15 is a semi-automatic weapon. Uh, you know, they have grenade launchers. They have, like, weapons of war is kind of a loose term to me. Um, basically, they carried revolvers back in the day, and now they still carry handguns, you know, that are regular 45s or 9 millimeters or whatever they sh choose to shoot. But they're just regular handguns. They're not weapons of war. I think you're kind of trying to lead the public in a certain direction with that but okay i mean whatever i don't really care um anyway that's that the one the, the the one that's really concerning me at this point is the hr hr 127 this this one is kind of nuts um and i'm not going to go over all of it because this thing's like 17 pages long 18 pages long i think 19 pages long um, I'm just going to hit some of the big relevant um, parts of it that I disagree with. And, and for all the other people out there that are not gun owners and you want to ban this stuff, I guess you're going to vote for it. But the people that do have guns and care about our rights as citizens, we need to pay attention to this stuff. We need to look into this stuff. Um, you know, that's where I'm going to say right now, please, you know, if you don't share my video, share other videos about this, this bill and let's get people aware of what's actually going on and what the government is actually trying to do here. Um, so basically, this whole bill is about registration of firearms to prohibit the possession of certain ammunition, pro pro prohibit um, certain ammunition, prohibit certain guns. Um, 
it's it's crazy. Let me just flip through here a little bit. Um, so right here, under the firearm registration system, the owner of the firearm shall transmit to the Bureau um, the make, the model, the serial number of the firearm, the identity of the owner of the firearm, the date the firearm was acquired by the owner, where the firearm is and will be stored, a notice specifying the identity of any person to whom or any period of time during which the firearm will be loaned to a person. So now, even if you have a buddy going hunting with you, you can't, hey, well, you can take this, take, borrow my other rifle because that's going to be a better situation for whatever we're hunting. Or maybe the guy wants to hunt and doesn't have a gun. Like, you're going to have to fill out some paperwork and shit and send it in and call it. When, when we've been doing this for years and years and years, decades, and nobody's ever been hurt by this. Um, The Attorney General shall establish and maintain a database of all firearms registered pursuant to this subsection. The Attorney General shall make the contents of this database accessible to all members of the public, the federal, state, and local law enforcement authorities. The public. So they want to know what guns you have, where you're storing them, what your name is, when you bought them, and that's all going to be public information. Now, I'm not a genius here, but it seems to me like you just made a public shopping list for criminals. Hey, now I know where to get a gun. I know where the gun is. I know how secured it is. I know what house it's in. I can't believe anyone would actually want this. I mean, do, do, do regular citizens, does, would they be happy if we made a list of all the things they have of value and make it public so everyone knows what they have of what value? I'm pretty sure they wouldn't. Uh, not to mention, you're, you're, trying to, you're saying there's too many gun crimes, so now you're going to make it more easily acceptable for a criminal who's already a criminal. They don't mind stealing a gun. Now they know where all the guns are. I mean, comments, that doesn't seem like common sense to me. Uh, moving forward. Attorney General shall issue an individual a license to possess a firearm and ammunition. You can't even have ammunition without a license. <sighs> National Instant Criminal Background Check System. We already have a background check system. Every gun I go to a store and buy, you have to pay for a background check. And they do it right there. You can't leave till the background check's done. If the system's down, you don't get your gun. Um, here's a, here's a, this is a really interesting one to me. Um, I'm going through the list of what you're going to have to do to get the license now. Undergo a psychological evaluation conducted in accordance with paragraph two. And the evaluation does not indicate that the individual is psychologically unsuited to possess a firearm. So you, you're going to have to go see a psychologist in order to buy a gun. Um, successfully completes a training course certified by the Attorney General in safety, blah, blah, blah. 24 hours of training. 24 hours! Okay, I don't, I don't, I'm, I'm assuming most of the people that watch this have firearms. It's a pretty simple mechanism. It's not super complicated. Um, the concept of being safe with that firearm are pretty simple. So somebody's going to need 24 hours of training on how to operate a firearm safely? Uh, I mean, maybe an hour course? Maybe? Like, it's really not that complicated. It's the, wait till you hear the cost of some of this stuff. Um, the, the, in order to get the license, you're also going to have to have an insurance premium which I'm still kind of trying to read through there. Uh, it seems to me like that's going to be issued by the state as well, which to me just means more money. Um, then there's there's another one on here for antique firearms. You're going to have to go through this whole process. If you have an antique firearm that you think looks cool and you want to, you want to display it somewhere in your house, you're going to have to go through this whole process just to display an antique firearm. 
which again, it, it, it seems like you're just trying to make some money off all this. Um, now again, here we have military style weapons. What, what is a military style weapon? I, I don't, I don't, it seems to me like we're trying to imply something here. Uh, you know, there's a lot of different guns used in wars over the ages. So what military, what year of military style are we talking? Can you not have an M1 anymore? Um, yeah, crazy. Including a 24-hour training period. Again, they list that in here. Now we're going back to more psychological evaluations. Is conducted in compliance with the standard standards as shall be established by the Attorney General. So the Attorney General now is going to pick the standards that the psychologist has to use to say whether you can get a gun or not. Licensed psychologist approved by the attorney. Is deemed necessary by the licensed psychologist involved. The evaluation includes a psychological evaluation of other members of the household in which the individual resides. But that, don't, don't even, don't let me stop right there. Don't let me stop right there. Um, the licensed psychologist interviewed any spouse of the individual, any former spouse of the individual, and at least two other persons who are a member of the family or, or an associate of the individual to further determine the state of the mental, emotional, and rely, rely, uh, rat, yeah, stability of the individual and the revelation relations to the firearm. Sorry, got uh, wad wadded up there a little bit. So now they're going to get to interview your, your exes, other members of your family. So you can't even just go buy a gun. Now you got to have your family's got to go in and talk to these people to see if you can buy a gun. Hey, it's, it's pretty crazy. Um, then we're then we we're still going into how they can deny the license with a me a mental illness disturbance diagnosis, including depression, homicidal ideation, suicidal ideations, attempted suicide, addiction to control a substance to a controlled substance. So basically, you can't if you had depression, you can't have a firearm. How many people in the United States suffer from some depression and don't have any issues or have firearms and have never had an issue whatsoever? And having been to a psychologist before for my sleep and for depression, and actually when I got divorced, I had a rough time. Um, it's a pretty open category right there. Uh, they actually diagnosed me with stuff that's not true. Um, so... We're going to put our right to protect ourselves or to own a firearm in the hands of an iffy, like, could go either way kind of thing. Um, you've, I mean, how many court cases have you seen where people bring in psychologists and they immediately get another psychologist to argue the exact opposite? So then we're into more and more. A lot of this stuff is, it, it's all... Uh, Pretty stuff they've been trying to go over for a long time. Um, uh, here's another eight hours of training. Uh, successful completion of a training course. Storage of firearms that includes at least eight hours of training. Uh, it's, man, it's the okay. Here, here's where we're talking a fee of $800. $800. And then they're going into Campy and Aranko, Mitchell, Polytech, Kalishnikov, um, any Israel Military Industries, Uzi, Beretta, Colt AR-15, Steyr, um, revolving cylinder shotguns, um, semi-automatic rifle that has the ability to accept a detachable magazine and has at least two of. So I guess if you can have one semi-automatic, but you can only have one magazine for it. Um, it even lists in here, I love this going down here, like a folding telescoping stock. Okay, big deal. A pistol grip that protrudes um, conspicuously beneath the action of the weapon. Cons conspi conspicuously? Uh, I don't know. A, ba a bayonet mount. You can't have a bayonet mount. Um, flash suppressor 
threaded barrels. I mean, a lot of these things you already have to have extra light. You can't have a suppressor without going through the feds and having an extra license. A grenade launcher. Okay, I, man, I would love to have a grenade launcher. I can't get a grenade launcher. You have to have a special license for that kind of stuff. Not to mention, where are you going to get it? You're going to have to get it illegally, so I wouldn't know where to get it anyway. Semi-automatic pistol that has the ability to accept a detach, detachable magazine. <laughs> so I'm reading like shit today. Um, and has at least two of. The... <sighs> You know, a lot of this is a lot of this is repetitive to me. Like, why don't you just say, "Hey, you can have revolvers and single shot rifles." Like, what's all this other? I mean, if you're going to go to this extent of everything, a threaded barrel, uh, you can't even have a flash suppressor, a silencer. Again, you have to have a special license. You can't just get a silencer, like at least to have it legally. And if you're going to get it illegally, what do you give a shit about these rules? Uh, a manufacturer weight of 50 ounces or more when the pistol is unloaded. Uh, now we have to weigh them to find out what they weigh. Again, and here's another one. Another one about folding stop. Another one about pistol grip. Um, fixed magazine capacity in excess of five rounds. Just, I'm just, just I mean, honestly, guys, I, I can't read over all this. I'll be on here for 45 minutes. And now, now we start getting to some of the violations. Um, if you vi if you violate section 922 AA, you will be fined not less than seventy five thousand, not more than one hundred fifty thousand, imprisonment not less than fifty years, and not more than twenty five. Um, if you violate 92 BB, you're going to have fifty thousand and not more than seventy five thousand, imprisonment of ten years, not more than fifteen. If you violate 922 BB. Uh, fine not less than 30,000, no more than 50,000, in prison not less than five years. Um, if you violate 922BB3, it's fine not less than 5,000, not more than 10,000. I mean, this is, this is, I'm going through here and here's another one. I, I, I just, I underline this one. It shall be unlawful for any person to possess ammunition that is 50 caliber or greater. Um, I used to have a whole black powder that was 50 caliber. Is that ammunition? Is a lead ball ammunition or a lead bullet? Um, my mom has a 50 caliber handgun. Does that, I mean, it's only five shots. You can't have that now either. It's not like it's going to shoot that far. Um, yeah, it's just a bunch of. I think the biggest one that gets me in this whole thing is the fact that the, pub, the public should know where where and what guns we all have, which to me is just a shopping list for the criminals. Um, that is just completely insane. Now, some of the other points I want to make about this, it seems to me that the people that have never shot a gun and the people that are against guns have a big misconception of what a gun actually is. Like, they think that they're these big, complicated pieces of machinery when they're actually really pretty simple when you break it down. And I'm willing to guarantee that any halfway knowledgeable machine shop worker can actually make a functioning gun. Now, to make a really precise, accurate gun is going to take a lot more knowledge. But the simple concept of a gun is, is not a big deal. Even back in the 50s, guys would make zip guns. It was a barrel, a rubber band, and a paper clip. All you got to do is hit the primer, the bullet goes. So let's talk about ammunition. The amount of people that load their own ammunition is, uh, it's probably in the millions would be my guess. Um, I know I have all kinds of friends that load their own ammunition. Again, it's not this super complicated thing. The stuff is all pretty simple, and if you want to make this illegal, you're going to make more criminals, and you're going to make some people a lot more money, um, especially the people that have quality friends that they know and trust, and they're like, yeah, I'll help you out. I can make two of those. I can make five of those. Um, so I, I read these things, and I go, so you think if you make it illegal, then... It's just not going to go like everybody's just going to turn in their guns and there's going to be no guns and there's going to be no crime. I, I don't think this is true. And I actually have this article right here 
Um, it is off the NRA site, so take it for whatever you want to take it for. Uh, but I don't think it was written um, about New Zealand because um, they're going to do their second round of gun confiscations. Uh, they did their first round. The Arms Act amend uh, the Arms Amend. I'm messing everything up. The Arms Amendment Act of 2019, um, where they came in and confiscated guns, and they had uh, they had their list is actually a little more accurate than ours. I mean, they 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 go a lot by overall lengths, um, you know. And they, right here, it's like an overall length of 400 millimeters or less, excluding silencer, pistol carbine, conversion kit, or other muzzle fitting attachments so i mean actually i think someone that actually knows more about guns actually wrote that wrote these ones um so they had all their confiscations and on june 2019 reported by the consulting firm kpmg had estimated that there were as many as 173,000 newly prohibited firearms in the country the New Zealand Gun Rights Group, the Council of Licensed Firearm Owners, established that 170,000 prohibited firearms were still in hand of the Kiwis after the confiscation period. So they confiscated a bunch of guns. They collected nearly 56,000 firearms, and there were still 170 prohibited firearms in the hands of the Kiwis. Um, Which is actually kind of interesting. So they took they took they took out fifty six thousand firearms that were that were confiscated. Um, there was one hundred and seventy newly prohibited firearms in the country, and there was one hundred and seventy left. So basically, people traded in their one guns and bought other guns. The way I'm understanding this, um, that were now then prohibited firearms. Because uh, you imagine a lot of guys hunt. Guys hunt with AR-15s. Guys hunt with what they consider weapons of war, um, and then other, and then like you know other guys, a lot of people just shoot. We like to just shoot. Like in the end, though, in the end of this article, in criticizing what he called gun buyback 2.0, New Zealand National Party police spokesman Simone Brown stated the first gun buyback was merely a marketing exercise. After spending 103 million on this scheme, the government couldn't even confirm whether it made any whether it had made New Zealand safer or it had collected all prohibited firearms adding that because the most law abiding New Zealanders handed in their their now prohibited firearms but gangs and criminals those who posed the greatest risk to our safety did not and i think that's a huge thing right there you can do all this buyback shit and all that's going to happen is law abiding citizens are now going to be unarmed and the criminals are still going to be armed. And this is a small little country in itself, outside of Australia. And guns were still managing to come into the country. There were still guns there and, gun, and new guns coming in. So thinking that you're going to get rid of all guns and all the criminals are going to go, oh, we don't need guns either because the government doesn't want them. I think, I mean, you talk about common sense law. How common sense is that? Now I want to speak just a little bit about <clears throat> the gun statistics. Uh, I forgot to print them out, but it's around thirty to 40,000 gun deaths a year. 60% of those are suicides. Um, having dealt with the severe depression and suicide stuff throughout my life, if somebody is full on and wants to commit suicide, they're going to find a way to do it. So taking their guns away isn't going to solve the problem. It's going to make them think a little more and consider other routes. Um, I think that I would have to guess that the gun is the most uh, used form of suicide because it is the most permanent. Um, but they're still going to do it. Just like if you take a gun away from a bad guy who wants to kill people, he's going to find another way to kill people. Um but what I don't hear much talk about and what I actually wasn't even able to find any really solid information on is how many crimes were stopped because of citizens with legal firearms that they actually did use to protect themselves. Um, going, going through the, the wonderful internet, that, those numbers are all over the place. From millions of times to, to tens of thousands of times. 
But you, I mean, I know quite a few people that carry guns, and in Nevada, there's a lot of people that carry guns. I mean, how many, everybody wants to go, but what about the people that died from guns, the poor kids, the poor people that got shot? And the, I, man, I'm, no American citizen should have to die from something like that. But is getting ready the gun, getting rid of guns going to stop this from happening? The Boston Marathon guys used crockpots and bombs. The Oklahoma City was a bomb. You know, maybe in taking their guns away, it might make it worse, which is just a stupid argument um, altogether because bad is bad. But what about the women who didn't get raped because they had a firearm? What about the 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 man that saved his family because he had a firearm you know are we comparing all the numbers to the numbers and those numbers are going to be hard to find because even i know guys that have had to draw their guns and they don't report it or nothing uh you basically just let it go unless someone unless they had to pull the if they have to pull the trigger they will but if, if it works out where they don't have to pull the trigger, it's, you just the situation's over. You go home. That's why I had a gun to keep myself safe. I'm safe. Everything's fine. Go back to the way it was. Um, so I'm wondering, are we really comparing numbers for numbers? And of the 30-some-odd thousand gun deaths, 60% of those are suicides, which I don't believe you're going to stop with or without a gun. And if that person is truly wants to commit suicide, they'll go find a gun. Um, and even if they'll get it illegally, cause they don't care, they're going to kill themselves. Why would they care where the gun comes from or if it's legal? And, and we've already discussed, you're not going to stop guns. Criminals are going to get guns and somebody else out there is going to go, I'll make guns cause I can make a lot of money. I don't care if they have them or not. Um, we can't stop drugs. If we can't stop drugs coming into this country, what on earth makes you think that we're going to stop guns from coming into this country or being made in this country? Okay, now I want to go to what is this really about? Is this really about saving lives or is this really about taking away people's rights? Because if we're talking about saving lives, then let's look at this from a very logical standpoint. Sugar kills way more people in the United States and does way more damage than guns do. What about automobile people? You know, the, the amount of people killed by automobiles and the amount of people killed by guns is actually very close. If we were to drop the speed limit in half, we would save a lot more lives. And yeah, it would take a little bit longer to get to work and a little bit longer to get places. But what's, I mean, if we're talking about saving lives, what's another 20 minutes out of your day compared to saving human lives? You know, I mean, if we're... If the amount of people affected by sugar in the United States is astronomical. I mean, we're talking about millions of people, even if they don't die instantly like they would from a bullet, they're dying early and they're having much unhealthier lives, which is putting a, a strain on insurance, insurance premiums. It's putting a strain on health care in general. I mean, what, what are we going to do about that? Why aren't we fighting that? Why aren't we going against sugar and, and, I'm using that specifically because a lot of people that are against guns, when I discuss it, well, why do you need a gun? I don't need a gun. I want a gun. I shouldn't be able to have it because it can hurt somebody. Well, then you shouldn't be able to eat sugar because it can hurt somebody. You don't need sugar. You know, there's plenty of sugar in fruit. That's, that's good enough. That's, you can get by on that. You don't have to have sugar. You want sugar because it tastes good and you like it. Well, I like to have guns. I like to shoot guns. It's a very enjoyable hobby for me. As a matter of fact, anyone I've ever taken shooting, even people that are against guns, after they go shooting, they're like, ah, that was pretty fun. And they want to go, and when can we go again? Because it is fun. So if we're, if we're talking about saving lives, then let's, then we're better off going after sugar because it kills way more people than guns do. So let's get rid of sugar first and work our way down the list where, where our money is the most effective. If it's truly just about saving lives. Um, so, and, and I, I was also trying to look for stats on, okay, if you're saying this many people are killed by guns, 
how many of those people were the bad guys that got killed by police or by private citizens with guns. And I could not actually find that stat. It says murder. It'll say murdered. Okay, well, was it a righteous murder? Was it a self-defense murder? Like, how many people are actually... I, I don't think that, that people want to look at the side of it. Okay, we know this many... The, the, the mass shootings. We have the numbers for people that died. But let's compare that to the number of people that are saved by guns. If more people are actually being saved by guns than are dying by guns, why are we trying to get rid of guns? The fact is, life is not fair. Life is not perfect. People are going to die no matter what happens. People are going to die. And, and I'm not talking old age. People are going to die from automobile accidents. People are going to die from suicide. People are going to die from from sporting events. People are going to die from accidents at work. People are going to die. That's a fact of life. It sucks, but it's a fact of life. So anyone that gets killed by a gun, I feel sorry for them. But are we really solving the problem by getting rid of guns? And are we taking more rights away from other people and leaving our community susceptible? I mean, Take away all the guns. What do you think the criminals are going to do? You think criminal activity is going to drop? And it's probably going to increase. Because now a criminal has even less reason to, um, to fear. Like in areas where, where, where it's well known that a lot of people have guns, the, the, crim, the crime rates are lower. Uh, another option I heard with, uh, I was watching um, a clip of, Stone Cold Steve Austin and on Larry King, I believe. And they were talking about the gun control. And one of the things that came up was that, you know, maybe there should be an extra five years tagged on. If you use a gun in a crime or you have a gun and commit a crime, five years mandatory. Like maybe we need to take the, the gun, the crimes with guns a little more seriously and tag on something extra similar to what we have done with hate crimes. And I'm not sure, I haven't seen statistics or looked that up to see if that actually worked or not, but it makes sense to me that it, it could be a possibility to help decrease some of the, the gun crime. Um, like, I think the mass shootings, I think those people are completely and utterly insane. I don't think they care. They probably don't plan on getting away with it anyway. They just want to take down as many people as they can would be my guess. And in that case, I go to the same thing. If the person is that crazy and that insane, if they don't have a gun, they're going to get guns illegally or they're going to figure out how to make bombs. And they're going to possibly do even more damage than, than um, they would have done with a, with a gun. So I think there's just a lot of stuff to think about here. And I don't know that there's actually one specific correct answer. Um, I have always been for, you know, if you need to do a little more, little deeper background checks, I, I'm for that. But I, I don't think adding to the cost of guns, you know, as I go through this thing, I'm like, wow, man, how much is this going to cost to have a gun? And how is a poor person who wants to protect themselves going to be able to afford a gun? And they live in the worst areas with the highest crime. Like, they need a gun to protect themselves more than a rich person does, but only the rich people are going to be able to afford it because you put all these extra costs and time, and you got to go get psych evaluations so you're going to miss work. So you got $800 here, you got to pay for insurance, you're, you're, you got to pay for all these new licensing fees, you got to pay for the psychologist. I mean, like, really? How are you, how's a poor person going to be able to afford a gun to protect themselves? Maybe all they want is a, a, a revolver to in their house to protect themselves because they live in a shady neighborhood and now they can't afford it because of all this stuff so what about that person i mean you always go well, what about the kids do you do you want kids to die no i don't want kids to die that's just dumb to even say that but what a, but who's going hey well what about the person that, that could have defended himself and now he dies or now his daughter gets raped or his wife gets raped or who knows what happens you know, when when it could have been a robbery and he tries to protect his stuff and he and he gets he gets killed. What about him? Who's thinking about him? If you would have let him protect himself with a gun, maybe he could have shot that criminal and he wouldn't have died. You know, what about that side of the argument? Anyway, like most things in our society, there's going to be multiple sides to everything. And I think the biggest thing is to try to listen to everybody and understand their side. 
I'm trying to listen to people. I try to talk to people about this. Most of the time, they don't want to discuss it if they're on the opposite end of it, which I don't know why not. I'll discuss it with them. But anyway, that's it. I just wanted to try and help inform people about this HR 127 that's going on. This stuff really freaks me out. This is a hugely long video. I hope you guys have stuck with it. Please share this video, like this video, um, subscribe to my channel, share the channel. And uh, I'm going to get out of here now. Hope you guys enjoy your President's Day. Bye.